turtles are evolutionary masterpieces. For a very long time, science and humans were unaware of their extraordinary skills, like their unbelievable speed. or their highly sophisticated language. It's amazing. We're always learning something new, especially in animal communication. We don't know everything, and when it comes to turtles, we're really just scratching the surface. Beneath the surface, there are some spectacular secrets. Brazilian scientists dared to investigate acoustically. The unhatched turtles start talking to each other while still in the egg and are in touch with their mothers as well. This puts turtles on a far higher level, neurobiologically speaking, than science could ever have dreamed of. This Yangtze giant softshell turtle is 150 years old and is the last male of its kind. To keep this species from disappearing forever, scientists are pinning their hopes on technology. Turtles in a CT scanner and in the lab. It's the last hope, cutting edge techniques that could make the impossible possible. For the first time ever, we've succeeded in bringing frozen sperm back to life, and it wriggled with joy under the microscope. It's a race against time. But the turtles do have allies. This friendship began 40 years ago and has lasted until today. Peter Paschak is a zoologist and conservationist. His alligator snapping turtle belongs to a particularly ancient species. Peter and his wife, veterinarian Shannon DeRusso, are a well-practiced team, but they still have to be careful. This ambush hunter may be cute, but he has some of the most powerful jaws in nature. Peter's on a mission to conserve and reproduce endangered species. At Turtle Island in Graz, Austria, he protects and breeds more than 100 turtle species. Highest scientific standards combined with an endless fascination for the development of new life. Peter has saved many endangered species from extinction and is still full of wonder. The heart of this turtle embryo beats up to 300 times a minute. The birth of this Indian-eyed turtle was a world first. They had never been bred in captivity before. Hello. Peter's dedication isn't confined to the 800 turtles on his turtle island. He's also involved in breeding and conservation projects on three continents, in tropical Africa, Southeast Asia and South America. His connections reach deep into the huge river network of the Amazon basin. Freshwater dolphins play in Brazil's Rio Trombetas. Cayman lurk, waiting for prey. On the sandbanks, hundreds of Arau river turtles they're probably one of the best studied freshwater turtle species in the world. A team of Brazilian scientists is waiting for the new arrivals. Their life cycle and migration routes have been carefully recorded for years. Their numbers are decreasing from one year to the next. Brazilian turtle expert Camila Ferrara and Shannon de Russo equip the animals with tracking devices they can be located and listened to 
at any time. Ferrara's eavesdropping operation has revealed sensational insights, the language of the turtles. It doesn't sound like the beautiful call of a whale. These are very short clicks that have to be modified to be audible for the human ear. They're very short sequences of clicks. The Rio Trombedas, home to the nest sites of the Arau River turtle. Some have swum hundreds of kilometers to lay their eggs here. Warily, deliberately, they dig their nests. As they dig, they are communicating and being listened to. Astonishing new acoustic worlds are revealed. There are definite sounds for this is my territory, or I'm hungry, or I'm ready to mate, or there's food here, or there's no food. These things are definitely communicated from turtle to turtle. Even at the most sensitive moment, in the female turtle's year, the animals communicate. The females return to the water and wait for months until the young are ready to hatch. They send each other important information because danger is all around. In deeper water, they use lower frequencies, especially when the females are calling each other together to migrate to the nesting areas. In the shallows, when they need to locate each other and coordinate their movements, for instance, to go up onto the beach, they seem to use higher pitched sounds that are more effective for locating each other. Camilla Ferreira has not just recorded communication among the adult turtles. She has also lowered her special microphone into these prenatal nurseries more than 2,000 times. And what she heard was truly amazing. The embryos communicate with each other in the nest too. Think of it, more than a hundred eggs, and they all hatch at exactly the same time. Of course, it makes sense to hatch at the same time as your siblings, to distract the predators and slip safely into the water together. It's a long way to the water full of obstacles and dangers. True to the principle of strength in numbers, the hatchlings tumble into their true element, where they are eagerly awaited. And when the young hatch, their mothers welcome them vocally. Because they have this kind of parental care whereby they swim back together with their offspring to the mangrove forests and teach them the migration route. So the females are showing their young the way to safer waters. A life-saving transfer of knowledge these insights will revolutionize the techniques being used in species conservation and maintenance. 
We may have been releasing hatchlings for decades that had no chance to learn from their mothers. The information couldn't be passed on because we separated them when we collected the eggs. There are projects in Malaysia where we've been releasing baby turtles for 30 or 40 years, but the population hasn't recovered. No zoo in the world is home to more kinds of freshwater turtle than Peter's Turtle Island. Examples of more than 126 different species have found a temporary home here. Half of them are facing extinction. This is the last male Hainan Chinese redneck pond turtle outside China. There are only four left in the Western world, three females and one male. And at the moment, all four are here in my house. Creator of the world, divine symbol of transformation, symbol of the universe. In Asia, turtles are ritually worshipped, like these temple turtles in India. Food will hopefully bring good karma and appease the gods, Vishnu and Kali. And in nearby Bangladesh, where the animals live in the ponds of the mosques, they are worshipped and adored. In other parts of Asia, they are hunted and eaten and there are only a few places left for them to live normal turtle lives. A visit to Shuzhou Zoo in China provides a glimpse of probably the world's rarest animal. He's more than 150 years old and the last living male Yangtze giant softshell turtle. There are a few females left, but the penis of this Methuselah has taken a battering. Under the direction of Gerald Kuchling, a renowned Austrian turtle expert, a Chinese international team attempted in vitro fertilization. This had never worked with turtles before. The experiment failed. But when it comes to species conservation, you never give up. Hanoi. Sightings of the Yangtze giant softshell turtle have been reported in Vietnam. Peter has often bought individuals of highly threatened turtle species at Asian markets and saved them from being cooked. But no luck this time. Local fishermen give him advice and the search continues into the interior, close to the border with Laos, to Ma Lake, where fishermen used to hunt turtles in big numbers. Together with a local animal rights activist and pictures of the turtle, he visits the huts along the shores of the lake. They all remember the Yangtze soft shells, and one old man shows how and where he hunted the last giant turtle. A painful demonstration for Peter. At several different spots of the lake, they deploy traps and nets, but in vain. The last hope is in Berlin. A soft-shell turtle in a high-tech CT scanner. Thomas Hildebrand is an expert in in vitro fertilization. He and his team were the first to successfully create elephant and rhino test tube babies. When it comes to turtles, we are only just beginning. We have a machine that gives us a comprehensive, detailed inside view of these animals. We can use these anatomical images to develop sperm harvesting techniques. How to gather the sperm or where the sperm should be placed in the female to achieve a successful insemination. Studying morphology is pioneering work. Turtles don't have a lobby. There are no financial interests at stake. The ambitious goal, freeze turtle sperm and thaw it again. This is uncharted territory for science.
No one's tried this before. Well, there have been several attempts to test storage media to see how long turtle sperm can be kept alive, but no one's ever frozen and successfully thawed turtle sperm. The experiment is being carried out with this male Nile softshell turtle for the first time. The atmosphere is tense. First, the animal is sedated. There are quite a few hurdles to overcome, and they're learning as they go. Electric stimulation and massage should bring the desired result. And this could be the last chance for a number of threatened turtle species. The samples are extremely precious. Each drop counts. You mostly only get small amounts of sperm, and if you need to compare different approaches to freezing and thawing, you soon reach your limits. We have a shortage of raw material to use for systematic tests. The image in the microscope is very promising. The first part of the experiment has worked. Now the sperm is mixed with the right medium, known as an expander, and frozen in liquid nitrogen at around 200 degrees below zero. Then the waiting begins. Peter Paschak hopes that his beloved turtles will be spared the fate of their fellows at the Natural History Museum in Vienna to be silent witnesses to an extinct species. Three months later in Berlin, time to open the last chapter of this scientific thriller. The tension in the air is palpable. There's a lot at stake. The tubes are brought to room temperature and carefully opened. The moment of truth. The glance into the microscope. Scientific history captured on camera as it happens. It's a huge step in species conservation, but there's still a long way to go. It's a milestone. We hadn't expected this breakthrough so fast, but we have to face the fact there are still many, many more steps before we really have a tool in our hands to help this species survive. Peter Paschak has already helped to protect a number of species, like the Northern River terrapin. A few years ago, there were only nine left. Thanks to Peter and his international projects and cooperations, there are now more than 200. In the Batagur breeding center in Bangladesh, his charges are being reared carefully and prepared for a life in the wild. But it's a dangerous life for the turtles especially in countries which not only demand veneration, but also like to eat them. For a project with the Nature and Life Foundation of Bangladesh, one animal is selected and equipped with a transmitter they hope will reveal more about the life and migration routes of this species. In 2017, the Nature and Life Foundation released the first animal into the wild. This is such a charismatic species. It's lived on our planet for millions of years and was almost driven to extinction because people like to eat it. That's actually perverted. Maybe this newly gained knowledge of their characteristics will help protect the turtles. As a wise man once said, 
Ignorance is the mother of prejudice. We always assumed that turtles are slow, deliberate animals that hibernate for a long time. But that turned out to be a prejudice. Their parental care and social behavior are highly sophisticated. They fascinate us with their language, communicating in water, on land, and even before they are born. Even turtle scientists who have worked with these animals for decades are surprised that they use such sophisticated communication underwater. They are highly talented relics from prehistoric times. In the 220 million years of their existence, they survived the dinosaurs, but mankind could be their doom. For instance, turtles can make very long dives. They can survive for a very long time without food. All these mechanisms have generated special enzyme cascades in their metabolism. If we could understand this, we might even be able to shape our own lives quite differently. There is a danger that these ancient beings will disappear from the face of the earth with all their astonishing skills before we have really understood them. It's Peter Paschak's life's goal to stop that happening. I have 800 turtles here in total. About 10 of the species here are extinct in the wild. My greatest wish, my dream and my goal is to set up a public institution that will create more space for the turtles and educate people on their struggle for survival. By combining the latest scientific techniques, we may succeed in averting the extinction of these fascinating creatures. And Peter's extraordinary dedication will keep the fate of the turtles in the world's focus.